I always gasp when I read this text and get to the point with the first point, the word of God was rare in those days. I don't like the idea that God is not speaking. After all, it was God's speaking that set creation in motion in the first place. So the thought that God is not speaking at any time frightens me. God not speaking frightens me because the Bible demonstrates over and over again that when God speaks, blessing, newness, abundance, and transformation overtake any desperation, desolation, or wilderness. In essence, God's speaking transforms what's going on. So the idea that God is not speaking concerns me. And given how far and how often the world moves away from God, I shudder to think that God somehow, God's word is rare because in times like these, we need a word from God. We need to hear from God. So I cannot fathom that God is not speaking, especially when the world is so broken and when injustice and oppression bind God's creation. Could it be, could it just be, that God is indeed speaking and that we are not listening? Could it be that every day we are encountering what one author puts as God unrecognized in the people, places, and experiences because we are too busy, too distracted, too caught up in our lives to see or hear God. Perhaps we have moved away from a posture of our spiritual forebears, people like Samuel who have been described as being in a revelatory state of mind, meaning that, you know what, they were just open, open to hearing God say something to them. That they were available to be moved or, or prompted or prodded by God. So I'm not so sure that the issue is the rarity of God's word than it is creation's unwillingness to receive a word from God. So I think you know where I'm going to go today. I think you know that maybe, just maybe, maybe we are not paying attention. So when the writers of 1 Samuel tell us that the word of God was rare in those days, I think the fault lies with the people who have become too hard-headed and hard-hearted to hear God speaking. This is a time when Israel and its leaders simply stopped paying attention to God. In a word, we, they were starting to, to get to know themselves. They were becoming powerful and prosperous. And at this time, Israel is led by judges, a series of savior figures who temporarily lead and protect Israel from more powerful tribes and nations. And Eli, the priest of Shiloh, and the last of these judges before God calls Samuel, is weak and ineffective and unable to provide the kind of leadership that Israel needs at this time because Israel is falling into faithlessness. Let me put it this way. Israel has become a, a, a party town. There's a lot of money going around. And then, and then there are all these other nations who want to conquer them. So Eli is just unable to respond to what Israel needs at the time. And then, then we find out that Eli's sons were scoundrels. That's not my word. The Bible actually calls them scoundrels. Eli's sons were scoundrels who got caught up in the chaos and lawlessness of the times. You see, when people brought their most uh, their choicest cuts of lambs and meat to be sacrificed, Eli's son would take that meat for themselves to, to indulge their appetites. And then we find out that Eli's sons are also having 
affairs with the women who work in the tabernacle. Oh yeah, they're enjoying themselves. They, they, are, they are taking advantage of the lawlessness. And Eli could not or would not stop his sons from dishonoring God and God's house. So given this behavior, given the times, it just seems like that nobody, especially even the religious folk, nobody is in a mood or posture to hear from God. No one is in a place to receive a word from God. And so, this is when they say the word of God was rare. Maybe, maybe people just don't want to hear it. But here's the thing. God is still speaking. And when everybody is too compromised and too unavailable and too mired in greed and idolatry, God will find someone who can hear. My professor in seminary says, described Israel at this time as a place of spiritual desolation, religious corruption, political danger, and social upheaval. But the good thing is that God will not stop God's covenant loyalty and God's assurance of Israel's future. No, God is about to do something big and new. And the beauty of it is God wants to tell somebody. Oh, God just wants to share. I'm about to do it. I need someone to tell about it. God is excited about what God is going to do, but I need, need someone who will hear it. God wants to tell someone who's ready to respond, someone who's ready to participate with God in what is about to happen next. So God will reveal God's self to a boy, one who is available to hear, one who isn't sort of caught up in the mess. The Bible said he's the one who sleeps in the sanctuary near the ark of God, right there in the very presence of God, and is in what one author is called a revelatory state of mind, ready to hear, ready to encounter. And we know that Samuel is in a revelatory state of mind because Samuel actually hears. You, you heard the text read. Samuel hears God speaking. He doesn't know that it is God because every time God speaks, his, speaks his name, he runs to Eli and says, you called me. No, I didn't call you. But he's in a revelatory state of mind. He cannot ignore the voice. And three times God calls his name. Three times Samuel hears. And Eli, the compromised and ineffectual priest and judge, remembers, oh my God, God is speaking to him. And he tells Samuel to go and listen again. And when God speak, speak. Lord, your servant is listening. So when God called again, Samuel said, speak. And then God began to tell him everything that God was going to do. God reveals to this new prophet that God is about to do something about Israel's idolatry and lawlessness. God is pronouncing judgment on Eli and his sons because of their failure to serve God's people. God saying now that the old ways and the old traditions, they're out. I'm about to do something big and new. And I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be, a, I want you to join me. I want you to participate. Something new is about to happen. And even though Eli is not likely to experience the new thing God is doing, Eli was faithful enough to step aside. Step aside. And Eli's last word to Samuel was, let God do what seems good to God. I hope we see how big this is. I hope we see how utterly transformative this state of being is. The era of the judges is over and the prophetic age is being ushered in through a boy, Samuel, that, that God is about to take somebody that looks like they can't be it and use that person for something new. God is stepping in to ensure a future for this people. 
And this is simply more. I don't want you to assume that this is about just a general call that you get. I don't, I don't want us to just say, oh, this is God is calling. God is that, that's too quaint. No, what I want us to understand is that when things are messed up, when things are wrong, when things are so bad, when the injustice is just all around us, that is the moment that we ought to be ready to hear because God is going to shake it up. That God wants to do something. God is trying to get our attention. This is about listening for God when the world is just so broken and so unjust and so far away from what God desires that we can be the instruments of change. Oh, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, if you look at the news, things just look like they're falling apart all around. It seems like the government has just gone off, way off base. Hurricanes all over the place, fires, public policy not working for the least of these, people being deported, people, the nastiness and coarseness of our discourse, and one wonders what is going on. What, it seems like it's all falling apart. And recently people have been voicing their frustration and desperation like, what, when is it going to give? What is happening to us? It, it seems like there's more racism than ever. It seems like there's more sexism than ever. It seems like there's more homophobia than ever. It seems like there's more transphobia than ever. What is going on? How are we to respond? I have something new. You see, I believe God is trying to get our attention. I do. I believe God is trying to say there is a new thing in the often. I want you to participate in it now more than ever in light of wars and rumors of wars, of the rejection of the widow and the orphan and the stranger, of political danger and corruption, of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia. God is looking for people who will hear and respond to God's call to be about justice. Now, I hope I haven't buried the lead. That means you. That means us. That means God is calling us. That if you're frustrated about what's going on, that means that maybe God is trying to get your attention. If things look like they're falling apart, maybe you are the one that's being beckoned to be a part of something new and big that God is doing. When Israel lost its way, a new stirring began to break its silence. And though the priests weren't available because of their selfish ambition, God's voice didn't cease. No, but through a boy, God's voice was beckoning someone else. God was still speaking, and God's word was breaking up a new future for Israel. I believe that that's what God is doing right now. And perhaps if we step away from our busyness and our business, if we turn away from the idols and distractions that make it hard for us to perceive God, if we assume a revelatory state of mind where we are open, open to hear what God has to say, if we're ready to encounter God, then maybe too we can be the people that God will use for that new thing. I don't want to be like Eli's sons, so preoccupied with the trappings and privileges of power that I'm unavailable for the call to serve God's people. I don't want to be like Eli either, mired in fear and silence and cowardice so that he misses out on the new thing that God is about to do. And he forfeits the chance to see the inbreaking of the reign of God. And I don't want to walk around encountering God unrecognized and miss the chance to experience the very presence of God. I want to slow down and maybe, just maybe, be prompted to be a part of something new. I want to possess a revelatory state of mind open to the work and presence of God so that I can hear God speaking. And let me tell you right now, 
We can't hear God speaking if we are beating ourselves up. We can't hear ourselves speaking if we're so busy hating our neighbor. We can't hear God speak through that. We won't be able to hear God speak if we're gossiping and fighting and backbiting. We won't hear God speaking. God won't come through in the middle of that nonsense. We won't hear God speaking if every morning we wake up and tweet some of the worst things that we can think of to people all over the world. It's not going to happen. God can't speak through that. God can't get through that noise. Oh, but God can do anything. Yes, yes. God can. But if we are not open to hear, if we're not open to see, we won't be a part of the new thing. Eli missed his chance. See, I believe that God is already calling some of us, but we keep running to our friends and saying, hey, did you call me? I believe God is trying to get our attention, but sometimes we talk too much. I learned several years ago, like, Dwayne, you talk way too much during prayer. Shut up. Let God say something. Let God get a word in edgewise. And some of us assume that God could not be speaking to us because we simply are not ready for what God may call us to do. And sometimes I know, I sometimes I know we I know that we know God is calling. But we are afraid to respond because it may be inconvenient. If I respond to what God is calling me to do, I may have to give up a few Sundays. I may have to put away some things that I enjoy very much. But here's another thing. If, if in any of those cases that we are not available to hear God, then my invitation is that I hope that we will be willing to step aside like Eli. And let God do what seems good to God. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. God is speaking, but oh, we are so negative. We don't want, that can't be God. And, and oh no, someone tells you, I think God is calling me to do, don't do that. I think God wants, oh, stop it. That's, that's not, it, it, it's not worth it. But I hope that when someone comes to you and says that I believe that God is calling me to do this, if you can't get on board or if you can't hear it, step aside. Step aside and let God do what seems good to God. Oh yeah, there are naysayers that want to say we shouldn't be doing the ministry that we do. But step aside and let God do it. Even if you can't hear it yourself. Oh, God is trying to encounter us. God is making God's self known in surprising and beautiful ways. I pray, I pray that we will all live in a revelatory state of mind, especially in this age. Things, things have to change. It can't keep going in this direction. And so I pray that we will assume a posture of receptivity. That we take on a revelatory state of mind to encounter God so that God will not be unrecognized in our daily lives. And so when you find yourself reluctant to hear, or if you feel like the word of God is rare, or if there's some prompting that is coming to you and you can't quite get your finger on it, I offer to you what Eli offered to Samuel. Simply Shut up for a few minutes and say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening.